Hello dear ones, it's, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I thought I'd talk just for a moment today about religious freedom and religious tolerance in the world today. And I'd like to compare two different examples of that. Um, one is complete fantasy. It was, it was an astral story that I heard the other day. Actually a very terrifying astral story. But fortunately, because of my uh, timeline shifting skills, I was able to get out of it pretty quickly without um, pondering it too deeply. Nevertheless, in retrospect, I think it had a good lesson for me. So, the astral story went like this. Uh, there was a thought that, that, that there was a type of weapon of war that... Um, that the United States could employ in the in the fight against uh, the people of Islamic faith that are um, that have that point of view of, of doing just about anything to to uphold their religion, uh, who are willing to resort to violence in order to do so. Now, first, I'd like to say that my understanding of the Islamic faith is that those people are in the very much in the minority of all the people worldwide who have that faith. And second, I'd like to say, uh, I went one time, or two times actually, in Los Angeles to a place that was explaining the Islamic faith. And it, uh, there they had people who were actually Islamic and other people like me who were just learning about the Islamic faith. And there they taught a kind of a, a saying, a prayer that many Muslims, uh, people of Islamic faith, say all day long, every day, all of their waking hours. And uh, the prayer went like this. La ilaha el Allah. You may have heard of it. It's pretty famous. Um, and the feeling that I got from it, although it might not be quite literal, I got the feeling Allah, of course, is their name for God. And the feeling that I got from the saying is that Allah, or God, is all that is. So that's kind of what... And they would say it with their hearts all day long. They would feel that prayer and say it with their hearts all day long. And I got to thinking, wow, what an incredible spiritual practice for people to remember God every day, all day. Don't you think? Now we have Christian faith. We might have our own way of doing it. We might call it walking with Christ, imagining that Christ is with us in his great compassion and love for humanity, walking by our side all day long. And that's our way of doing it, right? And we here in America, this country was, was, was was founded by spiritual religious refugees who weren't able to practice their own faith in their own land. They came to America despite the great peril of the journey across the ocean and the hardships that would face them and, and in many cases death, death both of the grown-ups and of the children, many perils that would face them in, in their new life in America because with their deepest hearts they wished for spiritual freedom. So this is the cornerstone, this is the, the purpose of America in the world, is to represent freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, the greatest liberty that a person can have, and still be in uh, accord with the needs of the, of the community around him, you see, without hurting anyone else to have the most liberty that he can have or she can have. So so there's that. Now now back to the astral story, a horrible astral story. And it went like this, that there was a weapon of war that had been designed in the fight against the Islamic extremists to that would that would actually um, target anyone who worshiped God in that way and destroy them that it would home in on the new, newest, the mini newospheric thought wave of that person who was repeating in his heart, La ilaha 
El Allah. And destroy him. This was the thought, that, that we would actually destroy someone because of their religious belief. And immediately I said, oh, I'm getting out of this astral story. And I optimized my timelines and I got out, you know, because that's not for me. Liberty and justice for all, that's for me. And so, so then I'd like to contrast that notion. That notion is a kind of a fear-based notion that people of other religions might represent a threat to us. You know, that any religion might be anti-American. To think of that, just to think of that. that to, to my way of thinking, all religions are welcome in America. People of all creeds, all faiths, people of all, all races are, are free, free in America, you know. That's how I see America. Now I'm going to take a story from uh, about 500 years ago, I think it was, from ancient India. Well, not too ancient. <laughs> not modern India, though. And at that time, there were a group of people called the Sikhs, S-I-K-H-S. And it was a very unusual religion because it had some qualities of the Islamic faith, which believed in only one God, Allah. And it had some qualities of the Hindu faith, which was also very prevalent in India at that time. And the Hindus, in contrast, worshipped God in many different aspects. And it's considered in modern days as being polytheistic religion, having many gods. Okay. So the, the Sikhs came along. The Sikhs believed in one God. And they also offered in their morning prayer a variant of that belief uh, that, that was in line with the Hindu teachings so they they uh, and the feeling was there were those people who related more to the to that polytheistic notion of God and there were other people who understood and uh, were uh, in resonance soul resonance with the monotheistic notion somehow or other they combined both notions <laughs> and so um, those people uh, the highest point in their history I felt had to do with their support of, of respect for women, which was unheard of in that time. And there was a wonderful um, prayer that, that was in the Sikh uh, prayer books about why we should respect women. So then in addition to this respect for women, uh, they also believed in protecting people of other faiths and standing up to and fighting against injustice anywhere in the world. They were very brave, courageous men in that group. And there came a time when uh, the, the Muslims, I think it was the Muslims, took over India. Now I'm not speaking against the Muslims here, I'm just giving an example of um, which I'll explain. The Muslims, uh, as I recall, took over India and they required that all the Hindus be converted to is the Islamic faith at that time. Um, and they would capture Hindus, as I recall, and uh, if they would not convert, they would feed them to the emperor's dogs. Now this is not really about Hindus and Muslims, it's about freedom to worship as we will. And the Sikhs saw it in that manner. And they, though they were very few in number, they aligned themselves with the mind and heart and will of God, the one God that they believed in, and they fought one against 1,000 or 10,000 to, to, in protest against the emperor's um, very cruel policy. And so they were all wiped out. They were all wiped out for, for the, the concept of religious freedom. So i just like you to take a look at those two examples of a way to live a life. You know, do we live in fear of other people who are different from us? Do we threaten to destroy people just because they're different? Or, or are we accepting of differences, or even willing to defend with our last breath 
the liberty of each person to worship as they will. Uh, yeah, all right, so, you know, many religious wars have been fought, so I'm not, I'm not against the Muslims in this way. The one story was uh, in favor of the Muslim faith being able to worship as it will. The other story was in favor of the Hindu faith being able to worship as it will. And I might add, in these days of atheism, the importance of allowing people of the Christian faith in the United States to express themselves as Christians in the world today. So, God bless and keep you all. Love you lots. <laughs>